guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. Now last week I asked you guys what species you'd like to see me talk about and a whole bunch of you said dwarf rainbows. So today we're going to talk about one of the pseudomoogles and this one is the Eru 4 which is a Gertrude type that comes from a little series of islands called the Eru Islands which are just above Australia and just below New Guinea. They are petite at between one and a quarter to one and a half inches. They have a beautiful blue lamp eye, really incredible finnage, are super easy to breed, and really well suited for a planet aquarium. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. As you can see, these guys are strikingly gorgeous. Really, really vivid patterning and that bright blue lamp eye. They look absolutely fantastic in a heavily planted tank. And for the most part, they stay in that top third area, making them an excellent choice for a, a really carefully aquascaped aquarium. Now, as I mentioned, these guys are small, only about an inch and a quarter, but they can take a pretty wide range of parameters with a pH of four and a half all the way up to seven and a half. I find that they do best in water with at least a little bit of hardness. They can also take a wide range of temperatures because in the wild, they have a very pronounced wet season. And that temperature range goes from 70 to 82. I, again, I find they do best in mid 70s. And they're a micro predator in the wild, readily feasting on, you know, different zooplanktons and small invertebrates. In the aquarium, they are very easy to feed, readily accepting pretty much anything you offer them. But with live, small live foods or small frozen foods being best for putting them in the mood. You can see they're very sexually dimorphic. The males have those really, really pronounced long fins. And the females are much duller in color, though both uh, genders have those dark spots on the dorsal, anal, and caudal fin. Now in the wild, these are a fish that are considered an annual, and that means that they are not particularly long-lived. They can certainly live longer than that in the home aquaria, but generally after about a year and a half, they really slow down in their breeding. Now they are a seasonal spawner in the wild, generally spawning in the wet season, which coincides with my winter. In the aquarium, you can pretty much spawn them all the time, and they'll spawn almost every late morning into early afternoon. Um, and they lay their eggs, they just scatter them everywhere. It's really easy to breed these guys by mop spawning, by adding really thick areas of dense planting up near the surface using moss or even the yarn mops that I've shown you guys how to make in the past. You'd want to collect the eggs every couple of days because they will actively eat the eggs and the fry. It takes the eggs about 10 days to two weeks to hatch, depending on temperature. And the fry are minuscule, like little tiny eyelashes that generally go right up to the surface. So it's especially important if you want to rear the fry that you pull them from the tank with the parents. Now that doesn't mean that if you leave them there, some won't survive, but if you want a good sized yield, you really need to pull the eggs. These guys are extremely social and they do much better in larger groups of eight to 10 or more. In an ideal world, you would do two males to four females. This is just a simple scoop of fish that I took from a 75 gallon where I have them actively breeding. In that tank, there's probably 30 or so adults in all different sizes of fry. Now it doesn't have a very good light and it's not a particularly uh, well-designed tank, so I pulled them out of that to put them in this little container to show you guys. All in all, I think these guys are well worth their price tag. This particular color form, costing between eight and twelve dollars a fish. Uh, there are a bunch of different Gertrude types. Most of the time, that number Eru four refers to the collection point in the islands. But these guys are definitely beautiful, super peaceful, and do well with other small, peaceful fish. They can even be kept alongside shrimp as long as the tank is extremely densely planted. They will eat some baby shrimp, but they're generally too busy engaging with each other to be really voracious predators. All in all, I think this is a fish that is absolutely worth keeping, especially if you like to maintain planted aquariums. Dwarf blue eye rainbows are a true personal favorite of mine, and I can't remember a time in the fish room that I haven't been working with at least one type. They're very rewarding fish to keep and to breed. As always, thank you guys so much for your continued support. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. 
stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things now.